Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. It's a great time to sell your house, buy a house. The market's down a little bit, but competition's still hot. So let's sell a house um, right before Christmas. Good time. Or buy somebody a house right before Christmas. So anyway, I'm excited for you guys to meet my new friend, Brady Augustine. He has a cool story. He's got a cool job. And so um, I'm going to let him tell you about it. But welcome to the podcast, Brady. Great to have you on here. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being a listener. I think... Um, we don't have as many as we'd like, so I appreciate you listening <laughs> and sharing it, and hopefully this one's going to blow up because you can blow it up. <laughs> well, with my own brand new podcast, I understand that. And, yeah. And I will say this, you know, as long as I've lived here, I still have so much to learn about the area. Podcasts like yours are very valuable to me. Well, I really I appreciate do appreciate that. it. Yeah, yeah, I love that we get to know new people through this, and it's just a lot of fun. And sure. so thank you for thank you for coming on the podcast. Absolutely. All right, Johnson City Living Podcast. You live in Johnson City. Favorite thing about Johnson City? The mountains. <laughs> I grew up, I, I I had to learn how to say Appalachian, not yep. Appalachian. Yep. Okay. You're, uh, you're now a local. That's right, right. 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 Now my, my dad, my father is a bit of a cowboy and okay. I mean that almost literally. Yeah. Um, and so we did travel out West and I fell in love with the mountains, but that was the Rockies. Of course, yeah. a little bit different. They're a little different. Yeah. But the first time I came through here, uh, to visit the area, I just, I'm, I'm an outdoorsman. I love to be outside and you can hardly ask for better than, it, than this area. Yeah. You got a favorite trail? I do. Um, I manage a lodge um, up at uh, Laurel Fork Falls. Yeah. So from from, I, and it was a half a mile around the corner from the trailhead there. So from yeah. the above, from Dennis Cove area, uh-huh. walking down to Laurel Fork Falls is one of my my favorite little just easy trips. Uh-huh. And a, another favorite, you know, I always got to bring visitors. You yeah, know, I got to take them and show them. Yeah. So that's why I do that. I like that one. Yeah, we grew up going to Dennis Cove <laughs> and um, had those logs across the le- you know across mm-hmm. the creek and three or four different places where we were having to like hang on the wire and get across. Yeah, it was so much fun. My dad took us up there probably. 10 times growing up. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I just always remember that. Yeah, I was out there once and there were two climbers that decided, you know, you co- you come across the creek. Yeah. There's that big. They, oh. they decided it'd be a good idea to try to get up that. Oh my gosh. And got halfway up and needed a little help to get back down. Oh so no. We got them down safe, but it was a, well, that's a harrowing situation. That's yeah. for sure. So where did you grow up? If you, I, you, how long have you been here? I've been here since 98. Okay. So I feel pretty well vested at this yeah, point. People like seem to years. accept that as a yeah. good enough number. Quarter you know? century, you're like, <laughs> that's right. You're, you're uh, a Johnson Cityan. Yep. Yep. So I'm from West Central Wisconsin originally. Um, if you think of the sort of stereotypical rolling hills with the Holstein cows and the red barns and, and uh, I was mentioning to Mitch that I feel coming from there, I, I feel down here I get along with everybody because I'm just a country boy, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and there is the difference between say North and South. Okay. There's, there's some differences, but to me, it, it, it's so much more. I meet so many people that grew up exactly the same way as I did around yeah. here. Yeah. Just good old boys. Oh man. And fun stuff. Uh, yeah. I you went know. to church with a bunch of farmers and yeah. just great people. Yeah. Yeah. But it is nice to be in Johnson city too, and have all the things that, you know, some of the th- things that you're Guests have been teaching me about yeah, this place. I yeah. didn't even know we're like, here. We've so. got lots of amenities, and uh, but yeah, you can drive ten minutes and be out in the country, yep. which is fantastic. Yep. Now I will say, you know, you can kind of it's one of those you can take Wisconsin, you can take the boy out of Wisconsin, but you can't take Wisconsin out of the boys. Right. So I I try to get back as often as I can yeah. and and still uh, have a, a deep love for for the state of Wisconsin. What's your favorite cheese? My favorite cheese. All right, this is a story. So <laughs> you brought me here. You put yourself and in I this just, situation. I didn't even, that wasn't, this was not staged at all. I didn't even have a clue. I just know, I know Wisconsin cheese heads. So Colin, it's, it's, if you go to Wisconsin, you have to go to the cheese factory. Okay. There's only one? No, there's, there's, there are several of them. I bet you you go to whichever one there. Yeah, you can get to, and you get cheese curds. I've heard, and they're kind of squeaky. They are really fresh. Right? The, the story with cheese curds, from what I understand, so you go to if you go to the factory, they'll have the, the ones from that day out and you can taste them. Mm-hmm. And yes, they squeak. My understanding is it's the enzymes that they make the cheese with that 
after 24 hours, it breaks the cheese down and they will no longer squeak. Ah. So if you eat cheese curds that squeak, They're you quick. got a pretty good idea. They just ah. got made. Yeah, oh, now that's cool. you can get them and I believe they are right out of Madison, Wisconsin, if I'm yeah. correct, you can get them at Publix, is it? Oh there? yeah. Uh, once in a while, I've seen okay. them over there, but you'll get them and they're not gonna squeak not for you. Squeaking. So yeah. yeah, take a trip. That's funny, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, and I never, I had, we had a friend we, we used to go to church with, she loved cheese curds. She uh -huh. loved it all the time. Every time she went to, she was from Wisconsin. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I usually try to, they make a great gift, so I try to bring them back. Yeah. Uh, um, I had- uh, She swore by them. I'm, Carly and I need to go get, try them out. They are, the, the cheese curds are a really basic mild cheddar. So oh, they're, okay. they're not something Sharp that's, and... yeah, if you're looking for something, you know, that's really going to punch something up. Or, yeah. They're just a little snack. That's gotcha. all they are. And they're gotcha. really good. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So let's talk about what you do for a living. You have a fan page out here. Yes. I, I talk about the Green Bay Packers for a living. So nice. I don't know. For those that are watching, I have my. Yeah. He's got his Green my, Bay jersey on. Yeah. My, More of a this, soccer jersey. This is, okay. So I'll, I'll preface this with a story. This Jersey, shout out to Salvador, is Salvador. from Aguas Calientes, Mexico. Oh, wow. Uh, the fan page that I run has, you know, a little over 400,000 fans on it. So it's a relatively large page. That's pretty big. The third biggest city, it might be fourth or fifth now, represented on my page is Mexico City of all things. Wow. Yeah, so there's apparently a pretty solid Packers following. So this entire <laughs> team of soccer players print these jerseys and he sends me one when they get a new one. And uh, cool so Sal that? Salvador and the Aguas Calientes Packers, champions a couple of years ago as well. So That's in their awesome. league. But yeah, I talk about, I generally do Facebook live broadcasts. We started a new new podcast this year called Hot Cheese with Aaron Knapp. Nice. And uh, we're excited about that, growing that, and have quickly been able to get some of the biggest podcasters in Packer Nation on that oh, as cool. well. So. But yeah, mostly what I do is uh, Facebook Live broadcasts, so you can probably appreciate there's, then there's no real post-production right. that needs to be yep. done and things yep. like that. So, so yeah, that's my kind of personality in, and then of course, through the, the podcast, eventually looking for sponsorships and things like this. Yeah. So, so what, did you, what was your first job you had growing up? First job I had growing up was mowing lawns. Yeah, same here, bro. Yeah, man, mowing lawns. And yeah. then what happened? Where did you, did you go to college after that or did you? Yeah, I, I graduated high school, went straight to college. I went to college at the time it was called Minnesota Bible College. Okay. So, and that was how I ended up, you know, uh, got married uh, the year after I graduated okay. I got from, from college, I got married. And then we moved down here when I got a scholarship to Emmanuel to go do my master's degree. Um, it was a full ride scholarship. I mean, you know, we had one, my, my son was like five at the time, oh, or whatever. Awesome. And it was like, this is the only opportunity to do a master's that I'm going to have. So that's how we ended up being down here. Emmanuel. Yeah. yeah. And then the rest is history. And it's also, I think, a, you know, shout out to Emmanuel too, because there's some really, really solid there's group of professors, professors up there. there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so did you take podcast classes at Emmanuel? Probably not. Or no. Like fan page, Facebook. I don't Facebook know that podcasting thing, wasn't. <laughs> I love hanging out with a dude that's my not, age. Let, can like, we tiptoe around that one, Colin? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have the Facebook. Back then. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, graduated, and then um, as I mentioned, I, I managed a lodge for a while. You know, kind of did the master's degree thing where mm -hmm. you flip burgers and and, and, and at the yes, mall, you know, you go, and that right? kind of thing. And then uh, had to bounce around a little bit. And then my brother came to me and said, hey, you know, what do you think about, he was doing search engine optimization from his home for people. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and he's my big brother. So he comes up with the ideas and I just jump in with both feet is generally how things work. Sure. And that includes literally jumping some things that we probably shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> he's like, I got the idea. You go get in trouble. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You get hurt with that's it. You get hurt. Uh, it's caught. Yep. So he, you know, he was talking about the Packers. I've, football's always been my first love. And uh, so I said yes, and, and we worked that page nights and weekends for over 10 years before oh, wow. we made a penny on it. So it took commitment, you know, I'm sure you understand growing these things, you have to be committed like it's a job. You know? Follow through, you yeah. gotta follow through. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to another buddy who uh, has a YouTube page and he said, yeah, you can, you, can, um, you can do it if you want, but you gotta start like 10 years ago. You know? Yeah, and so it's, yep. it's tough. Well, and what I do too, you know, now it's an interesting change out of the necessarily the podcasting arena, but 
the, plat the social media platforms themselves now will monetize for you. So you don't have to do that. That's one of the good things now. That is cool. If you're interested, you know, anyone that I do encourage people, if you have a passion uh, and, and you to not shy away from Facebook as a platform that sure. can make money, you need to monetize, you need 10,000 fans, which sounds like a lot. Yeah. Uh, but if the way to do it now, I built, I've never paid for an ad. My, I will say that on the podcast because I'm kind of proud of it. Sure. This is hundred percent organic growth right. was ours. Yeah. But now the way that Facebook algorithms work, you can't do it that way. So, but if you do purchase, um, you know, ads, mm -hmm. you can quickly grow a page. I grew my Bucks Nation page in right before COVID, of course. So it got, I didn't do much with it after that, but, um, you know, Giannis Antetokounmpo was playing well. The Bucks were playing well. So I ran ads for about two weeks, and I ended up with 9,900 fans at the end of that. Wow. Yeah, so I do encourage people, if, if you have a passion you, and, and you're willing to do the work, it's not really a difficult to, and, and then the, the monetization through the platform takes care of all your, your, your tax information gathering as well. So definitely some advantages to it, but mostly I'm just really g grateful to be able to talk about football for a living. So. Yeah, so talk to us about the fan page. Like, one, how did, so you, you and your brother get going and you just start talking about football. Like, you could, talk, I guess, tell the audience how, how you would get it started. I mean, you yeah. just start talking about players and games sure. and what's going on. Or Well, we started it long enough ago that the, the model was different back then. So back then it was you build, you build a web page and then you try to get enough traffic to, to get advertisement dollars through that. Um, I since have actually let the web page itself go because the social media platforms are doing all that work for you. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, basically watch the games and uh, every day I get on and there's always plenty to talk about with you know sports fans. It'd be like, Packers fans are very similar in my mind to UT fans, you know, Green Bay is, the Green Bay Packers to Green Bay are like UT to Tennessee. It's just absolutely fanatical. Like, yeah. yeah, we're crazy about it. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, watching the games, film breakdown becomes important. Um, but mostly, and and now you know we've got a brand new quarterback, Jordan Love. This is the first time we've been without a Hall of Fame quarterback for a while, and uh, he took a step back last night playing the Giants, and we lost. Okay, so. Packer Nation needs some catharsis from time to time, <laughs> too. You need a therapist. And yeah, so that's yeah. me. I'll so just can, sit and listen to you. Yeah, you can just you let it all out. I'm I, here. Just yeah, let it go. Yep, I often often do that. But, um, yeah, and it's it's interesting. I do travel back. I'll, I'll leave and go to the Packers-Buccaneers game at Lambeau Field this coming weekend. Nice. And so... Be nice I, and warm up there, won't it? Oh, a balmy 40 degrees. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. That actually is kind of nice and warm for it us is, that at is this nice time and of warm. Years. But I feel so bad for those guys because you look at that turf and it's like just rock solid and you're like, oh, you're playing on concrete. Yeah, well, Lambeau actually, they, they've heated it under there. Now. Oh, yeah. Now, fancy. It, now, your, your listeners, I just got, recently got to tell this story and I'm going to tell it again. You're absolutely right, though. You know, the ice bowl, it was just plain frozen out there and they used to call it the frozen tundra, right? Oh. So when Lambeau Field, when they redid the field and then they installed all this, you know, advanced equipment and it's a hybrid field now, it's it's real grass, but it's stitched with some other stuff. Oh, that's cool. But when they tore the old field out, you literally could purchase cake boxes of Lambeau Field, uh -huh. and it said Frozen Tundra on it. And there I have a go. buddy who's got it in his freezer probably to this day. Piece of the Frozen Tundra. That's, that's how crazy. <laughs> it's just They did that at UT when they tore up the Oh, turf. did they really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, it was a, well, See, there a great you go. way to monetize it and yeah, like, pay yeah, for the man. field. I think they raised $10 million. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I, I know. I, and you bought a square that was literally four yeah. inches by four inches. Right? Yeah, that's great. Yep. Yeah, the, the Packers are the only publicly traded uh, team in the NFL, yeah, NFL as well. Yeah, I think that's cool. So the fans own them, right? Yeah, it's not a it's not a profit sharing, but I'm a shareholder of the Green Bay Packers. How many uh, shareholders are there? Do you know? I did look that up once. the The most recent release is the one that I got in on, but I couldn't tell you how many. I did look that up it's at one point, but I don't remember. Hundred thousand or more, or probably. Yeah, more it is. Yeah. Um, it's and not like there are twenty of you guys, and you all. No, there's no there's. I want to say it's it's. Thousands. Hundreds of yeah. thousands at this point, because they've done like three stock um, options. Option, yeah, uh, I think it three times something like that. So that's cool. Does it pay a dividend or how? Do it they... doesn't pay a dividend. It's it's basically a donation for the team. This is how the team. It's Green Bay is a hundred thousand people. I mean, right. to have an NFL team, they weren't going to have one, and they basically so went around and knocked it. on doors and guys 
people gave money to make sure that team stayed around. It's almost like Johnson City having an NFL team. I mean, yeah, we're 70,000 people. So yeah, John, uh, Tri Cities is bigger, you know, right. than, right. yeah, yeah. Maybe we can get one. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm, <laughs> I'm all, we'll, we'll get that started. You could probably do I'll it. I'll do a fan page on it. I know, and you like, <laughs> probably have, like, one. monetize really quickly. How yeah. much you need? Like, call, call, yeah, the call course, is out. I think out. to start an NFL team, you probably need hundreds of millions of dollars. Probably, probably. I don't even want to think about how much you'd need. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I put in, you know, it's, it was just a few hundred dollars. Um, and, and I make money off the team. I was very happy to do so sure. you get to go to i go to every i can go to the shareholders meetings nice. and they do a legit meeting you get greeted by the mark murphy got up when i was there two years ago and said okay here's this latest stock offering this is what it's going to go to so if you watched monday night football last night um oh no no that was at the giant that wasn't at lambo so but if you go to lambo field now they have they have uh jumbotrons that are almost the size of the north and south end zone those were purchased by, with my money. That's so, cool. Yeah, and they, they tell you all that stuff. You get special swag. You can get shareholder uh, t-shirts and oh, sweatshirts. Cool. Yeah. And you get a share that's, I think, one of the most interesting pieces of sports memor memorabilia there is. Yeah, you know, it's cool. just, you, I have a shareholder certificate for the Green Bay Packers. Really, really fun. And, and it gives you a makes pride you feel, in ownership it, about it. Does, it, right? it does, it does. You yep. deeply care about them. Yeah, and I've had people say, you know, wouldn't it be better if, you know, if it was a profit sharing? I said, I'd love that. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. That would but, be cool. But yeah, but but I'm very proud to be a shareholder of the Green Bay Packers and, and, and to basically have been able to contribute to yeah. where they're able to go. Um, That's awesome. Now with your fan page and your celebrity of that, do they allow you special access? Do you get to go to certain different things at the Green Bay Packers to kind of continue to promote them and uh i don't uh i am act trying to make inroads so gotcha. it's interesting uh um, well if you're listening packer people yeah i've i have let met, brady in there that's right let me in guys you know wes and, and spoff i have met a couple of the people um uh the the president i got a chance to just say thank you you know yeah. just real quick while he was getting on an elevator you know that's cool um but uh it as it so my hometown is Black River Falls, Wisconsin, right on the west side by the Mississippi there. Okay. And uh, it just so happens that myself and the curator of the Packers Hall of Fame both graduated from Black River High School. Oh, nice. So That's I'm cool. going to, Brent, if you're out there, yeah. I'm going to be asking him. So, you know, he could get me into, and the Packers Hall of Fame is really a must-see if you're up in the area. Okay. It, is a, it is a wonderful Hall of yeah. Fame if you love foot, NFL football. You'll appreciate, um, you know, Title Town. Uh, take the tour up there. So, well, like when you think of football, and I mean old school football. You, I mean, it's like the Cowboys, right? The, Steelers, uh, Steelers, yeah. and the Packers. I mean, yeah. it's like it, it, you just think of them as a timeless, like from the very start. Yeah, they've been around forever. And, yeah, and since nineteen nineteen. Well, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, right? And yeah, so it's pretty amazing. Yeah, for, for a small town like that, and, and it, it is really a matter of pride and, and you know, win, lose, or, win, lose, or draw, we're going to be bleeding green and gold, I think, There you go. Forever. I love it. I love it. What do, you, um, what do you see for the future of your fan page? I mean, are you trying to grow it up to a million followers? Oh, that's or? a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. I am, my goal, so Green Bay has been awarded the NFL draft for 2025. Nice. Uh, which is again another nice thing about being a shareholder is Mark Murphy let us know he's like I don't know which I don't know if we're going to get it in 2027 and but or 2025 but I think we're going to get it. So that of course is a watershed moment you know for my business. Um, I am expecting, and my goal during that week is to hit uh, five million video views. Nice. Um, I have that's another kind of thing I feel a little bit pride in is you know we. They just announced what the dates of the draft are. Yeah, and I had I had my spot booked before they even announced what the dates of the draft were. So nice. I called my I got a guy. You know how that feels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I called my guy and he's like, "Yep, we got a spot for you." So we got you set up. So you're yeah. gonna be in the draft. Here. I'll be. We'll be at Green Bay for the draft. I'm not sure. They're not quite. They haven't let us know if they're gonna do it inside Lambeau Field. There, you can look up the parameters for what size area you need for the NFL draft, and they it sent looks, us a diagram of it. It's significant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got a so, lot of families and players right. and media. But, and... Yeah. Well, and, and kind of like Johnson City, you know, Green Bay, not a big town, but they've done a lot of work to get the draft. They, they've got what's called Title Town District down there now. So you might have seen, if you've watched a night game 
you know, where Green Bay played Tennessee or something, uh -huh. there's actually a, a tubing hill oh. that comes off the top of one of the buildings there oh, in right. Titletown. And How cool is that? Yeah, so for a small town, if you again, if you love football and you want to get, dig into that history and just have a, a good time. that Go to Green Bay. Yeah, Green Bay is a great place to go. Yeah. And it, not, not only that, but if you're, if you're from Tennessee and you love the wildlife and the, and the beautiful scenery, Wisconsin gets a bad rap, but it is an absolutely gorgeous state. Oh, absolutely yeah. beautiful. I need to go check it out. How yeah. long does it take to drive up there? I'm I can Johnson get, City. yeah, it depends on which side I'm going to. So if I'm going home, that's the west side. That's a couple hours more, probably 14. I can do through Chicago to Green Bay. I can probably get there in around 12. Okay. So, so 12 to 14 hours. Yeah, yep. Maybe a two-day trip. Stop in uh, bourbon country up the Yeah. Way. Well, of course, when my kids were growing up, it was always a get in the car at 8 o'clock and drive all the way through the night. Right. And that was no fun, but it was just better. <laughs> just uh, yep. better. Been there, done that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, you guys keep it quiet down there. Yeah, that's right. Sleep all just the way. Just sleep the whole way. That's even right. though dad wants to too but <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it all right so how are the packers doing this year i'm not a packers nfl guy so I don't yeah know. well they just lost on monday night football to the giants last night their first loss or it's not they're six and seven right now i believe uh had just gotten even brand new quarterback first time in like 30 years that we haven't had a hall of fame court a brett Favre or an aaron Rodgers behind center and uh, who do you Jordan? like better brett Favre or aaron Rodgers? oh gosh that's, that's such like an Picking at which hand you should chop off. It, I love them both so much. <laughs> yes. Love you both guys. Uh, they're, it's almost apples to oranges just because their play styles were so different. Uh -huh. I will say this, you know, Brett Favre, you know, he had a Vicodin addiction that he had to own up to and get over. And he really kind of captured the Wisconsin people by just going, listen, I've got a problem, you know, stick with me through this and, and, and I'll make it worth your while. Um, and he was a country boy from Mississippi too. So yeah. Then Aaron Rodgers comes in and he's a California, looks like a beach bum, carries himself, you know. Good looking and it, dude. It took us a while. Yeah. And, you know, and after after Brett Favre too, it's gonna take a while to warm up to anybody. Right. And then uh, Aaron Rodgers comes and he's, you know, he's a little more, he's just different. It took a while, but yeah, but love them both. Successful, and that's what, you know, that, yeah. that heals a lot of wounds winning a lot of games. You know? That's right, that's right. And, and Jordan Love now has a, you know, he's got big shoes to fill, but he's he developing well. Uh, Utah State, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, and uh, we traded up and drafted him at, I want to say 20, I think Rodgers was at 24 and, and, and Jordan was at 26. Gotcha. But for both of these guys, um, you know, they, they made significant moves for a quarterback of the future that would not have to necessarily, that they, they didn't have to put on the field immediately, um, which is difficult to do in the NFL anymore. Yeah. You know, these guys that get drafted high, especially the first rounders, you gotta you gotta go out there and play. You know you gotta get after. Yeah, Green Bay system, in my opinion, is uh, it's a Ron Wolf system, and he's a Hall of Fame general manager. So that's part of their process, I think, is yeah. keep your eyes open for these guys, and if you see one, you just you gotta take a swing at it. So so uh, go Jordan. He's he's really growing on us. He's made some very Aaron Rodgers slash Brett Favre esque shows throws. Excuse me. That's so good. that's always exciting. Major growing pains. I mean, it's the entire t his entire wide receiver core. He's got two guys that are second year players. Everybody else is rookies, pretty much. Oh, he's wow. got two rookie tight ends. So we're in a rebuilding rookie. year. Couple that's years, probably. been that's see it's good that you use that term. That was a huge debate. What is the term that's it's okay to use for right. what we're doing? Right. I call it a youth movement. Oh, we, you know, you we, we didn't bring a lot of our veteran players back. We still got some, but but yeah, I mean, regardless of what you say about it. Green Bay is very young. They've got a brand new starting quarterback that had only started one game before, um, and and they're going and they they're the youngest team in the league. They're the cheapest offense in the league. Also, that's good because of so many yeah so new so many rookies right and, unless and, you got like high draft number picks right? right right and then if you have a Hall of Fame quarterback he's got to get paid so the last three years of Aaron Rodgers' career in Green Bay. We were pushing our chips in, so now it's a hard cap to league as well. So right. now you're up against money issues. Yep. So we're looking for by 2025 to have a little bit of relief in that regard as well. That'd yeah. be good, kind yeah. of spread the wealth out a little bit. Sure, it's sure. More, bigger base as opposed to one all star person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, it's definitely a team effort. When the whole team is playing good, you see them, if you're like, 
team can beat some people now. They're, yeah. That's a good team. And then when they're not, you're like, this, this team needs, still needs a lot of work, needs a lot of practice, needs a lot of reps. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So um, you're headed up to Green Bay this weekend. They're playing Tampa Bay? They're playing Tampa Bay, uh, which is another one of the teams that's right on the cusp of the wild card spot. Oh, okay. So, uh, with Same the, with you guys? Same with Yep. Packers? Yep. Yes. So, so if you win this one, you may get a wild card? If, if, we win, if we win this one, our percentage goes up to, I want to say, in the 70 or 80% range. Uh, and then there would be, what, the three more games after that. So if they uh, win a couple more games. Right. Two of the, the Week 17 and Week 18 matchups are both against NFC North opponents. So mm-hmm. that'll be, those two will be big as well. Got the Vikings Week 17 and the Bears Week 18. So, yeah, it's all coming down to it. So, you know, if you're a, te- if you're a, a Titans fan, I heard they won, too. Oh, okay. Happy to hear that. I haven't, I'm, again, I'm, I'm sorry for yeah, no, listeners. Right, I don't follow the NFL too well. Are yeah. the Titans doing well? I do not know. I, I will say up. they're kind of my second team. Well, I that's moved right. here in 98 yeah, and so in 99. Kind of a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how they started, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I got so many friends that, you know. So I, I will say for everybody out there, I was so pulling for Packers Titans a couple yeah. of years ago in the Super Bowl when they both went to the championships. I had a buddy. I was like, "We're gonna do this. this is gonna be awesome." Then <laughs> Didn't you're gonna come. like really, really be torn. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're born in you know Wisconsin. You got it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd be Packers, but all the way, all the way. Um, well, let's do a little uh, speed round kind of stuff. Like, what is a what do you like to do for fun here? For fun here, mm-hmm. Johnson uh, City. You go out this afternoon. You're gonna do something for fun. Just boom. I'm, I'm just going to go take a hike. Go take a it's, hike. There you go. It's a beautiful day after the cold rain we've pretty, had. Yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah um, obviously coming from Wisconsin, the temperatures don't. I'm, I'm, You're I'm, impervious to cold. I, I'm a like little here, bit. Yeah, we, I have people move here and they're like, it doesn't get cold here. And I'm like, yeah, I oh, do. It's cold. No, they're like, no. I do some crazy things too. I, I'm a, there's a guy named Wim Hof. I'm a little bit of a Wim Hof disciple. He does cold weather. Yeah. And the, the breathing. Yeah. And then ice baths and things yeah. like this. So I will be at Lake Watauga in February swimming in the... So... Brady, I don't know so... what's wrong with you, Brady. <laughs> no. I hope you're okay. <laughs> I'm not going to come in I'm and get I'm not. You. Yeah, I'm oh certainly gosh. not okay. No. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it... I've got buddies who are getting in the pool at the wellness center and the, out, the outdoor pool, and it's like 40 degrees, 45, 50 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Right. It's interesting because cold cold water is actually really really it's good super for you. Therapeutic. Yeah, and it really is for many too, reasons. And I'm just trying yeah. to build up my my yeah. manliness to get in there. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get in there, but I just don't want to. <laughs> yeah, usually when I take a trip to Wisconsin, I have to get in the lake. Oh. So one of the things people generally don't know about Wisconsin, um, you know, Minnesota's motto, state motto, is "Land of Ten Thousand Lakes." You right. probably heard that one. Yeah, uh, Wisconsin has even more. Oh, there's, wow. there's, I, I want to say it's 11,000 or 14,000 named lakes in Wisconsin. Oh, man. You pick up a rock and hit a lake. That's why I, my, one of my favorite places you're asking to go if I, if I, my car is down today, but I go, go to the lake. Yeah. You know, that Lake Watauga is gorgeous. It is. It's absolutely beautiful. beautiful. I, and I've I, heard one of the fifth cleanest lakes in the country. I can believe that. Yeah. It, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. It, it's beautiful. And coming from Wisconsin, that's one thing that if they had the mountains, but there wasn't that lake there, oh, it'd be a little tough for me. You know, yeah. I'd want to, I'd want to get to the lake. So yeah. yeah. So lake time. Okay. What's your favorite place to get a cheeseburger? Gosh, a uh, burger and cheese and is a big deal for you. Yeah, it is a big deal for me. Good point. <laughs> so now I'm going back through my list, thinking, did any of them say that they had Wisconsin cheese? Wisconsin did they cheese. ever advertise, advertise that? Yeah. Okay. So barrel but, and bur- bur- yeah, burger. Yeah, burger and burger barrel. barrel. Kyrie, Kyrie, and and. Don out there, he's yeah. my Raiders fan friend. Okay. Uh, Don's planning to come to me, come with me to the draft. Oh, nice. In 2025. So, Don, if you're out there, come on. Yep, let's okay. do it. Let's do it. What's your favorite pizza joint in town? Um, I don't generally, I haven't gotten to that many pizza places around here. Uh, Mellow Mushroom would yeah. probably be okay. the one that comes to mind. One, yeah. yeah, yeah. They've got a great lunch special. Well, I tell you, Scratch is the one that I, and they I know, close. but they closed yeah. and then they opened was, for a minute and now they're closed. Oh, did they? <laughs> Bro, yeah, it was like, a, I think like a weekend or something. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, but, I don't know if that was a, a, another COVID casual. Coffee or, drinker? What? You a coffee drinker? Where do you Big like coffee to drinker. Coffee? Yeah, yeah. We're well, drinking coffee from the moon with our friend Brett. Thank you, now, Brett, Now, this for the is my first. Yeah, that's good it's coffee. It's delicious. Good it, coffee. He does yeah. a good job up there. Yep. So the moon coffee right downtown. But besides the moon, what's your favorite coffee joint? Um, uh, open Door. Yes, I Go love there. Open Doors. Uh, hey, I, Mike and Sherry. Were, yeah. Because there was one that was open at the mall for a while there that had some pretty good oh, coffee. yeah. yeah. 
Um, pop-up kind of thing. Yeah, they're the ones I went and asked for a macchiato and they knew what I was talking about. So there you go. Yeah, so you are a coffee drinker. Big. You're fancy. Yeah, I used to I used to be youth minister over at Walnut Christian Church and they we had a guy come in there that had been trained in Seattle. And oh wow. He he talked us into buying a cappuccino machine. Oh nice. And they pulled the trigger on it and they bought this single group manual Astoria machine. It's beautiful, beautiful oh cappuccino yeah. maker. And then we, they had a really nice area downstairs and we'd have a band come and play and then I'd be back there and he'd make train them. me how to make cappuccinos. And I oh, tell you nice. what, that's a skill. And I'm yeah. probably looking for work when I come back here. I may go to Starbucks and hey, see if I can get there a job. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah, but Carter he was really- so. Yeah, yeah, but he was really good. So if, if I had my druthers, I would just about take one of the cappuccinos we were able to make there or the mochas I, that we were making, I thought were fantastic. And that I'll one. say that for that's myself. That's cool. But yeah. The, it's all gone now, I guess. There you go. It's all gone. Um, okay. What are some things that you want to share that I haven't asked you about? Anything special more about your, your fan page? How do, how do listeners find you on Facebook? Yeah. If you just look up Green Bay Packer Nation on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Green Bay Packer Nation, all one word. Okay. Um, and then my Instagram uh, only has about 10,000 followers on there, but that's at the Green Bay Packer Nation. The Green Bay Packer yeah. Nation. Yeah. Yep. We're going to blow that up today. I mean, all we, right. We put the, when this releases, this, we'll I get, mean, we're going to get, get at least. You're juicing people. my page, man. I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> yeah, glad you're a good it. man. Want to yeah. do it? Yeah. However, I can help. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, um, you know, with being up there this week, of course, uh, will be a, a, a nice boost. Um, the, the fans love it when you get to go live from Lambeau Field. It's just a little bit different than watching yeah. it on the TV copy. And it is an iconic field. It's just a really, really great, great place to be. So that's cool. So yeah, we'll pump that up. Um, and then you just got to kind of, you know, doing what I do, you're seeing the potential end of the season coming. Uh, and that's a big transition for, for folks that do what I do. So, right. uh, like I said, I may be looking for work, you know, but, gotcha. uh, that's, well, that's, help, that's the, you can come sell some houses with me. Hey, all right. Yeah. All right. I, I, a little sales ba background. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll yeah, be fine. yeah. Did you set up like a like a studio kind of set set up at like uh, the you know college game day where you've got your table there in front and Lambo's behind you and the people are all doing their thing and you're doing your page? Or how yeah, I I don't. I haven't actually been doing game day this year um, as as often as I should. Um, but we did start a new podcast myself yeah, and Aaron now. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, have been needing to do a podcast for years mm -hmm. and just kind of once I got into the Facebook Live without having to do post-production, I jumped all over that. I'll be honest, as soon as I saw that come about, it was like, that's where I wanna be and that's where I stayed. Uh, but then now, you know, as more people kind of got clued into that, the mm -hmm. competition has made, has thinned me a little bit to where I, I'm like back to pod, it's time to get back to podcasting. Gotcha. And uh, new Erin in town, she had the equipment, um, but was having trouble just getting, you know, it's gotta be a commitment's gotta be there. Uh -huh. uh, so I got to thinking about it and I was like, you know what, let's see if Erin wants to bring her stuff over. We'll do a studio if she wants to talk some football. She's a real football girl. So cool. we call her the football girl, kind of like the Ohio State, you know? That's fine. So yeah, so that's been fun. But with that, I did build a, a, a mobile studio because again, I'm the, all of these plans are leading up to the draft in 2025. Nice. So then I can just break that down. Um, it's PVC built. Um, so I can break that down uh, with the lighting situation or the lighting setup, yeah, uh, the audio setup, and we'll just we'll take it with me when I go up there. That's cool. On. So yeah, so that is an, a fairly decent setup. I had to throw it together pretty quick, but it's all painted up and it's well, all in packaged colors. Good. Yeah, all packaged it's not colors. bad. Yeah, I've had I did have one of the podcasters that we had come on our show. We've been having guests on a regular yeah. basis, and uh, he said he was jealous. He said I've been doing this for seven years. I don't have as good a setup as you. <laughs> so. I love it. I love but it. But yeah, yeah, we have fun with that. That's cool. Yeah. Where can we find your podcast? Tell me about that. Again. The podcast is called Hot Cheese, a Packers pod on Hot Spotify. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. Squeaky cheese. Yep. And we are in a transition phase in terms of the platform. Okay. Uh, so I've had a little bit of a hang up with Spotify that I'm trying to. So you should be able to find it on all the platforms. Okay. Uh, but there, I do know there is a bit of an issue that I was trying to get to this week and haven't been able to to get to and make sure. Well, it's if you can't figure it out. I know a great guy with Maypop uh, Media that. Can uh huh. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I Maybe may have he, to ask. He, would, yeah. he can knock it out of the park. And he's raising his hand, so that's a that's a binding contract, right? At that. Point. Yeah, I think you uh, you signed up for Mitch. Uh, <laughs> Mitch help. 
Yeah, this is this is the podcast that keeps I on giving it. right here. There yeah. you go. That's yeah. right. This is That's my right. kind of show. All right, one more time. <laughs> Packer Nation. Yep, Green Bay Packer Nation on Facebook at the Green Bay Packer Nation on Instagram. Uh, if you if you are, and there's tons of Packer fans yeah. around here. So one of the interesting things is, you know, I do you have a local group like I meet? don't, uh, we but start a little been, I've been toying with yeah. that idea. The issue has been that I'm going live all the time. On gotcha. So. Uh, but I would like to start up a club if anybody's got a spot. And we did meet uh, Rocky down in Jonesboro. Rocky's Pizza. There's my Rocky. favorite pizza. Shout out Rocky. Rocky's Pizza. I grew up on that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And he, when we were doing the podcast, we wanted to do a little video to introduce it, um, which will be on the front of the fan page. If oh. anybody wants to see Aaron, you know, and, and, and kind of meet her. Yeah. But Rocky's a huge Packers fan. That's awesome. So he lent us a Green Bay Packers helmet that he had and uh which we we just loved and we took a picture too with him i think he got i think he got ten thousand hits on his photos awesome. so you know this is one of the deacons at our church um he uh bruce colson he he had a church in green bay for a long time he and his wife Najee. and so i need to get them connected with you as well i believe i know him you probably do he's super nice and he yeah. just went you know our friend the way, the way we connected was our friend chris shea who, yes. He and Bruce were just in Africa digging a well last week. Oh, together, okay. Okay. Which is really cool. Yeah. So, very cool. Very shout cool. out to Chris Shea and, and Bruce Colson. You guys yeah. are awesome. Yep. Hopefully we hit water. Yeah. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Important yeah, stuff. Yeah. It is. Sure. Yeah. We're, we're seeing that in our, in our own country. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so, well, I've, um, I've learned a ton about Packer nation. I've learned a ton about Lambeau field. It's just been a great, great time hanging out with you and um listeners if you want to connect with brady he is just a great guy um, i'd tell you to follow him on instagram let's get that up to a couple million people and then get his fan page up and <laughs> and really just because he's just a great guy you can tell he loves packers but he loves people and just loves connecting with them and i can see that in your eyes and um, i've just enjoyed getting to know you this morning it's a wonderful area uh, johnson city is great yeah, yeah, it's a wonderful Yeah, place. so people are fantastic. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast, and I, I really did enjoy this conversation. If you're Absolutely. thinking about making a move to Johnson City to hang out with Brady or me, we would love to help you make Johnson City your home. Um, we love Appalachia, and um, we, we love helping people build wealth here through um, real estate as well. So if you're ever thinking about buying a rental property, we'd love to help you with that, and we manage all that for you, and it's just a passive way to, to grow wealth. And so we, we love helping people do that too, but... Um, our main deal is helping people move here and um, buy and sell houses. So thanks again for listening. Uh, look forward to our next conversation. And um, until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. Have an awesome Christmas.